Welcome to the latest video of the series How to Paint Your Dark Souls Miniature. Today we will cover the steps to paint the Mimic and the Mimic chest from the Explorers expansion. If you like this tutorial, you will find much more Dark Souls content, other board game unboxing, how to play videos and reviews on this channel. So if you're new, welcome and consider subscribing to always receive the latest updates. As we start our painting guide, I'll be using the Dark Souls Trilogy Compendium for the colors reference. Whenever I can, I try to make my miniatures as close as possible from the game, but sometimes I take some artistic liberties, either to make the model stand out more, or to look and feel like they are part of a set, and even to facilitate gameplay. The Mimic is a good example of those types of liberties. There are actually three references in the book, and I'm mostly taking the reference from page 417. The skin color of the other mimics are lighter and you can achieve this result by exchanging the Kislev flesh layer that I'll use for the Pallid Witch flesh. The tongue is more pink than the red I'll use, but I wanted to give this bloody look and to facilitate the painting. If you wanted more pink, you can dissolve the methstone red with any white base you have until you reach the desired tone. To start this project, you need Mornfrang brown base, Wraithbone base, Mephstone Red Base, Bugman's Glow Base, Amadon Black Base, Iron Warrior Base, Catacomb Flash Base, Kislev Flash Layer, Astaroth Red Dry, Seraphine Sepia Shade, New Oil Shade, Black Primer. Speaking of Black Primer, that will be our first step. I detail the process of preparing the miniatures in another video, so don't forget to check it out before we start painting. For the chest base, I'll be using the Mornifung Brown base color. Take a bit of the paint and dissolve it well in water. The paint can't be too thick so it dries and covers too much of the texture, nor too thin to make it dry marks. Continue painting all across the miniature, avoiding the arms and thong, and let it dry. When trying to reach the back of the chest, it's okay if you paint over the tongue by mistake. As long as it's not too much paint, you can cover that after. We'll do the same with the chest. Once it's dry, apply a second layer to make the surface consistent. For the Mimic skin base, we will use the Catacomb flesh. Apply a consistent layer across all the miniature, including the legs and arms. The tongue base will be a mix of 1 to 1 Mephstone Red and Bugman's Glow. Since the paints have the same acrylic base, you can easily mix together the colors to reach the desired tone and save you from buying specific tone just for one thing. Don't forget to add water to the mixture to help dissolving both colors together. I did this to dim down the saturation of the methstone red and to blend a bit better with the chest color. Once it's dry, you can use the Astaroth red to highlight some areas of the tongue. Use a dry brush and a paper towel to remove the excess of the paint before applying it to the model. The dry color is a great tool to mimic the light reflecting on the model and to make the texture of the model pop. It's time to add some scary teeth. 
Take a thin brush and apply the raised bone base on the elevated areas of the teeth. This contrasts with the morphing base giving some cavity looks. The chest one was a bit too small for me, but it will get the same effect once we apply the shade. To make some of the tongue veins detail, I mix Mexton's red and Abaddon black to get a darker tone. I did not mix with a lot of water because I want more precise strokes. Taking a thin brush, start following the lines of the veins on the model. For the Mimic skin layer, we will use Kislev Flesh, but if you want a lighter tone, use the Palette Witch Flesh instead. You need several layers to get the skin tone effect, but one thing that I found was easier to do was to start with the elevated areas of the model to give an idea of where the model naturally receives the light, then with the subsequent layers, blend this part towards where the muscles meet. The metal trims of the Mimic follow the same looks as the regular chest. As usual, take the paint, dissolve into the water and follow through all the trims of the chest and the wrist shackles of the Mimic, taking care not to hit the wood parts that are already painted. As for the shade, we use the Seraphine Sepia on the skin parts and the new oil for everything else. Let one shade dry before applying the next one. The shade will accumulate in the deeper parts of the texture, bringing the details to life. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time.